Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Wednesday, February 15, 2023. A historic $1 trillion budget was tabled in Parliament yesterday, outlining the government's proposed spending for the 2023-2024 financial year. The breakdown shows the majority, $665.5 billion, going towards recurrent expenses. $75.3 billion is earmarked to fund capital projects and $280.6 billion is budgeted for debt servicing. The 2023-2024 estimates of expenditure was tabled in the House of Representatives by Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark. He says the allocation for capital expenditure focuses on priority areas to enhance development. Revenue is projected to outstrip expenditure, resulting in a fiscal surplus for the financial year. Central government revenue and grant inflows are estimated at $897.6 billion, which alongside the above-the-line expenditure of $887.7 billion will generate the required fiscal balance surplus of $9.9 billion, or 0.3% of GDP, consistent with fiscal rules. The corresponding primary balance required for debt service and to generate the targeted fiscal balance is approximately $165 billion or 5.6% of GDP. Minister Clark says the overall public debt is estimated to end the current fiscal year on March 31 at 79.7% of GDP. This is expected to further decline to 74.2% over the next financial year ending March 31, 2024. This is a, a projection, it depends on parameters and variables that are not totally in the control of any single person. But should it be achieved, Madam Speaker, that is a 74.2% at the end of this fiscal year, it would mark the first time since the nationalization of the financial sector crisis through FinSAC in the latter half of the 1990s that debt has entered the domain of pre-FinSAC levels. A further breakdown of government's $1 trillion budget for the 2023-2024 fiscal year reveals major allocations to the ministries of finance, health, national security, economic growth, education, and agriculture. The Ministry of Finance's $430 billion allocation includes over $418 billion for salaries and day-to-day -day operations and $12.7 billion for capital projects. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is budgeted to spend $118.6 billion on recurrent expenses, while $6.4 billion will spread across several capital projects. These include continued work on the Western Children and Adolescent Hospital, Cornwall Regional and the University Hospital, in addition to programs such as the National HIV Response and the Prevention and Care Management of Non-Communicable Diseases. With a total budget of $118.6 billion, the Ministry of National Security will use close to $6 billion to continue the infrastructure development of police stations and the forensic pathology autopsy suite, as well as the procurement of a surveillance ship and technology equipment. The Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation will use $33 billion of its $49 billion budget to carry out roadwork developments as well as electronic land titling and climate change and credit facilitation projects. $4 billion has been added to the budget of the Ministry of Education and Youth, while the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries is getting an additional $3.4 billion. Public sector entities that are not in agreement with the compensation review process have until March 31 this year to get full retroactive amounts in one payment. The decision was made clear by Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark, who asserts that all payments due within the first of the three-year process will not be carried forward into year two, the 2023-2024 fiscal year. $338 billion has been allocated in the 2023-2024 recurrent budget for payments that are due in year two of the compensation review. This level of expenditure, Madam Speaker, is approximately $100 billion higher than the wages and salaries for fiscal year 2021-2022 after adjusting for allowances previously captured in programs, i.e. 21-22 is the year prior to the effective date of the restructuring, which began April 1st, 2022. 
During a statement to Parliament yesterday, the Finance Minister issued an appeal to bargaining groups and delegates while indicating that the Ministry's team would work feverishly and make themselves available to complete the process by the March 31 deadline. Any of these amounts not paid this fiscal year will have to be paid over a number of years beginning in the fiscal year that follows the upcoming one. Madam Speaker, even if the first time is a no, we are not deterred. That does not mean that we cannot get to a yes. There are only a few weeks left. We are available morning, noon and night, weekday and weekend. Let's talk. Let's get it done. In other news, government is giving priority attention to addressing gender-based violence with the final of three national shelters being established for women who are victims of abuse and their children, set to be operational by the end of this year. Governor General Sir Patrick Allen made the announcement while delivering the throne speech during yesterday's ceremonial opening of the 2023-2024 parliamentary year. A third Government of Jamaica shelter will be renovated and retrofitted to become fully operational and provide a confidential and safe space for female victims and survivors of gender-based violence in the Western region by December 2023. The first government-run shelter for victims of domestic abuse was opened in 2020. The second was opened in a remote location in December 2021 to focus on housing very high-risk victims. To amplify protection for domestic abuse victims, drafting instructions have been issued for further amendments to the Domestic Violence Amendment Act. This was based on inputs provided by the Ministry of National Security following parliamentary approval of amendments to the Firearms Act. Government will be undertaking a number of measures in the 2023-2024 legislative year to continue the modernization of law enforcement in Jamaica. These include the expansion of the Jamaica Eye Network, the inclusion of additional sites to the radio and microwave networks operated by the Jamaica Constabulary Force, and continued construction and renovation of police stations and other facilities. The policy direction was announced by the Governor General yesterday. In building a secure, cohesive, and just Jamaica, government remains relentless in executing the strategies paramount to safeguarding citizens' security. At the same time, the government will continue to partner with critical stakeholders on ongoing initiatives to intensify social investments in identified vulnerable communities. To strengthen Jamaica's coastal protection infrastructure, additional marine vessels will be acquired during the year. At the same time, key legislative reforms will be pursued to improve public order and safety and support a reduction in crime and violence. Priority will be placed on amendments to the Fingerprints Act, the Immigration Restriction, Commonwealth Citizens Act and Aliens Act, as well as review of the Corrections Act. The Proceeds of Crime Act will also be amended to include unexplained wealth. And finally, states of public emergency, SOEs, have been declared for three additional parishes, Clarendon, St. Anne and the Kingston Western Police Division. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement in a press release this morning. He says the new SOEs have become necessary following a surge in criminal activities in these areas. They took effect at 12 a.m. on February 15 and will be operational for an initial period of 14 days. Since the start of the year, the Kingston Western Police Division has recorded the highest number of murders and shooting incidents across all police divisions. The Clarendon Police Division, meanwhile, has the third highest number of murders across all police divisions with a total of 15 murders and four shooting incidents between January 1 and February 12, 2023. The St. Anne Police Division began the year with 50% fewer murders in January 2023 than in January 2022, but that was reversed with an overall 22% increase in murders as of February 11. Also, three murders were recorded in January 2023 and six within the first two weeks of February, a 100% increase in gun murders in half the time. Prime Minister Holness says organized gangs are the main source and cause of the violence that is leading to fear and terror in some communities. In response, he says the government's main priority is to use all lawful and constitutional measures to protect the lives of innocent citizens. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.